In this Warframe guide, we're going to talk about the most painful mistakes that can significantly hurt your account progression if you make them. And, of course, I'm also going to tell you how to best avoid them. See, no matter if you're a Warframe beginner, a returning player, or even a veteran with a thousand hours, there are a lot of things you can do wrong in this game. And in most cases, you will only find out it was a mistake dozens of hours later, and then you realize you screwed up big time. So let's make sure you're not suffering the same fate, and after a huge shout out to all my generous channel members who helped me keep the lights on, let's jump right into it. Mistake number one, and I want to make sure to put this one in the first place so everybody sees it because it's that detrimental. Without exaggeration, you can throw away hours of farming progress by just one wrong click, and that is maxing out your big mods too early. See, as most of you know, in Warframe, mods can be upgraded using a resource called Endo. And while mods that can only go up to level 3 or level 5 are usually quite cheap to upgrade, there are mods that can go up to level 10. And about these mods, there is one very important thing that you need to know. With every level, the strength of the mod increases linearly. For example, Serration gives you plus 15% damage on level 0, then plus 30 on level 1, plus 45 on level 2, and so on. However, the cost for upgrading doubles with every level, meaning it increases exponentially. In other words, getting a level 10 mod only up to level 8 gives you 80% of the potential strength at only a quarter of the cost. And when I say cost, we're talking about 40 freaking thousand endo to max out just one single level 10 prime mod. So, long story short, getting endo, especially when you're in the early or mid game, is quite a time consuming thing, so make sure to never ever ever spend all your endo just on one big mod. Better go and bring some mods up to level 7 or 8 instead, this will overall give your account much more value and you're not throwing away all your endo. The next mistake goes kind of in the same direction because it also has to do with mods, at least partially. See, when you play a lot, you will potentially get hundreds of duplicates of one and the same mod. And you can use them to your advantage by turning them into endo using your mod console in the orbiter. However, you could also go and sell them for credits. And especially in the early game, where usually credits are a bit tight, this might be very tempting. But, and this is a big but, please do not do this. Unless you're a veteran with like a thousand hours in the game and every single mod maxed out already with no need for endo anymore at all, do not sell your duplicate mods for credits no matter how urgently you need those credits. Sell them for endo. It is a much better investment. And on the same note, now that we're already talking about selling stuff for credits, there are some other things you definitely do not want to sell off just to get a couple of credits. See, recently I made a YouTube community post and asked you guys what your most painful mistake in Warframe was. And a lot of the answers went into one specific direction, which is selling off rare things for credits just to open up a bit of inventory space. Those things specifically including the weapon Zoris, which you will get from the Deadlock Protocol quest, and is a pain to farm separately if you accidentally sell it off afterwards, the weapon drops from the Stalker, aka the Dread, Hate and Despair, and specifically the Broken War, which is one of the best swords in the game. And these are just some of the things that you probably potentially hypothetically want to reconsider before actually selling them off. In general, my personal rule of thumb would be do not sell stuff out of your inventory for credits if you do not know where you got it from or if it's any good. Moving on to number three, and this one was probably the most mentioned one in the poll that I made, and that is wasting your 50 starting platinum. See, platinum is the premium currency in Warframe, and you can only get it through trade with other players or by buying it for real life money. And when you first start the game, you will get 50 of this platinum currency for free. Now, to be fair, 50 is not a whole lot, but you can get some specific items from it that will help your account on in the long run. But those items do not include cosmetics, colors, speeding up the crafting process of your foundry, or anything that is being sold via the Darvo deal. 
I know I'm like a broken record because I pretty much say this in every single video, but if you are a very fresh player, do not spend your 50 starting platinum on any of those things. The only items you should ever consider buying from this platinum are inventory slots for weapons and warframes so you can have more of them. One Warframe slot costs 20 Platinum and two Weapon slots cost 12, so it's your decision whether you want to go for one more Warframe and four more Weapon slots, or two more Warframe slots and therefore no more Weapon slots at all. In my humble personal opinion, two more Warframe slots usually beat the Weapon slots. But if you're a Weapon Enjoyer, then hey, you do you. Also, if you could maybe spare a like, that would make me really happy because it helps the video a ton with the YouTube algorithm, so big cheers for that. Alright, now the next point on our list is a bit more on the serious side. And that is, please, for the sake of your account, do not use any third-party software, services or any type of account sharing. Warframe has quite strict terms of service and they are being enforced. Now, while the devs say it's not specifically illegal to use key macros to speed up certain processes, if the automatic cheat detection system were to flag you for using any of these, you're still not gonna get your account back. So I personally say it's really not worth it to have any type of program running in the background. As for the last thing that I would never encourage you to do is, do not share your account, not with your girlfriend, not with your siblings, and also not with your friends. All these types of account interactions break the terms of service and can get you permabanned. And while for some of you this is hopefully self-evident, just in case you didn't know this breaks the terms of service, it does. Please do not do it if you want to keep your account long term. Now, the next point on our list is not really that much a mistake per se, but more, let's call it general, well-meaning tips when it comes to interacting with the open worlds in Warframe. As you're probably aware, there are currently three open worlds that are available to play in. The Plains of Eidolon on Earth, the Orb Veles on Venus, and the Cambian Drift on Deimos. Now, all of them are accessible pretty early in the game already, however, you should be aware of the fact that they can consume a lot, and I mean a lot of time, if you really want to dedicate leveling them up. And this is sort of a two-sided thing. While yes, there are a lot of mods and upgrades that you can access through these open worlds, spending tons of hours on these open worlds also means that you're not progressing in the main game on the star chart that much, which can be kind of bad because this should be your primary focus. So when it comes to dealing with the open worlds, here is my personal tip. Before you go into any of the open worlds, do a little bit of research on what you actually want to get out of them. Why are you going in there? Which upgrades are you farming? By making clear to yourself what you're trying to get out of there, you will already know how much time you're roughly going to put in, and then you call it quits once you have what you came for. Some personal suggestions from my side would be the bond mods that you can unlock with some of the NPCs in the open worlds as soon as you're rank 3 with the syndicates there, the helminth segment for your orbiter as soon as you can unlock this from Deimos, as well as a few set mods that can be obtained as a reward for doing bounties. Now, as we're speaking about, you know, story progression, there is one point that I absolutely want to hammer home that you need to understand when you start playing the game or getting back to it after a longer hiatus. Warframe is no race, and there's no reason to feel bad about not having a specific thing unlocked yet. Especially when you're new, all the different content and systems that the game throws at you can be completely overwhelming if you're trying to understand and wrap your head around all of them. So in order to actually enjoy your time with the game and not feel burned out or overwhelmed, try to see Warframe as a solely single player experience, where you play the game at your own pace and instead of having these tons of systems be some negative chore to yourself, see them as a nice addition. See Warframe as a game that still introduces new things to learn and have fun with 50 hours into your campaign. What I'm trying to say here is, just enjoy the act of playing the game itself instead of thinking about the dozens of systems that are potentially somewhere out there in the future, even though they're not yet relevant for you. But alright, philosophy lesson over, promise, let's now talk about stuff that you can use to upgrade your Warframes and make them stronger. Introducing the Nightwave Terminal in your orbiter right here. 
Now, to make it very short and concise, the Night Wave is a free battle pass where you can do daily and weekly activities to gain points to rise through the ranks and unlock all these things up here. No matter how new you are in the game, always check out these activities right here because even if you're still a freshling, some of them are always easy to do and they will allow you to gain at least a couple of levels until the season ends. Now, the big thing I want to talk about here that could be a mistake is how you spend your Night Wave credits. See, at some levels, you get Nightwave credits as a reward that you can use to purchase things from the accompanying Nightwave credit store. And it is right here where you really, really want to avoid spending those Nightwave credits on the wrong things. Now, there's a lot that's being offered here in the shop and some of the wares are also on a weekly rotation. However, the only thing that I think is worth spending your Nightwave credits on until you have enough of it is Aura Mods for your Warframes because they are very good, Orican Reactors and Orican Catalysts for your weapons and Warframes to double their mod capacity, and also very important, Natain Extract. Natain Extract is a crucial resource when it comes to crafting Warframes in your foundry. So if you splurge all your Nightwave credits on something else and then you want to build your next Warframe and it requires Natane Extract, well, then you're apparently screwed until you unlock the next batch of Nightwave credits, which can take quite some time. Remember how I just mentioned an item called Orican Catalyst? Well, this is a crucial item that you will always be in need of in this game, because you can equip this to a weapon to double the weapon's mod capacity, aka opening up way more possibilities to make the weapon stronger. The problem, however, with these Orican Catalysts is they are pretty much just a premium item with only very few exceptions where you can actually farm them in the game without spending money, the Nightwave being one of them. So, since these Orican Catalysts are such a rare find, you want to make sure to not put them onto weapons that are really not good. Only use them on weapons that are good and can carry you further into the game. Now, you might be wondering, well, Blackie, what is a good weapon that's worth investing into then? And to this I can say, I already have videos on the best starter weapons, the best mid-game weapons, and the best end-game weapons in the game. So, no matter where you are in your personal playthrough, this is where you could potentially go to get some ideas. Also, if the video helped you until here, you might want to consider subbing to the channel because I'm planning to keep my weapon tier lists updated and therefore there are new versions of those videos coming in 2024, so with a sub, you will not miss them and get them day one. Remember how in the beginning of the video I was telling you what not to spend your 50 starting platinum on? Well, what if you just have a bit of money on the side? What if you like the game and want to financially support it to keep it free to play for the rest of us? Well, first of all, your money, your decision, and that's completely fine. But there are some things, and I want to be very specific about this, that no matter how you look at it, they are always bad deals and you never, ever, ever, ever want to spend your platinum on that. Now, I don't want to go on a minute long rant right here because I already made a video about this specific topic exposing all the worst market deals that you could possibly take. But to make it short, the worst offenders are resources that you can purchase directly from the market and credits that you can also directly purchase from the market for platinum. Now, the amount of resources and credits that you get for your investment are so ridiculously low that, depending on the situation, you can farm more than that in just five minutes. So don't spend your hard-earned platinum on those things. Also, as we're talking about spending platinum, there is a trade chat in Warframe where you can find players to trade items for platinum with. And if you don't have experience with trading in Warframe, you know, you don't really know what is worth how much, then please do not use the trade chat because you are gonna make bad deals. If you want to trade with players and don't get scammed, then use the external website Warframe.market. This works basically like an auction house in a traditional MMO where you can see all tradable items in the game and for how much they're being sold. I would personally suggest rather go there until you have a better idea of the whole market. And now that we are already talking about spending platinum, please don't fall into this one trap that I personally also fell into back in 2019 and I'm not proud of it, and that is spending a lot of platinum on buying ribbons from other players. Now, this tip is not so much for the new player because you will not have access to Rivens quite some hours into your playthrough, but more for the returning veterans or mid-game players. I know, having that one god 
odd roll ribbon on your favorite weapon that gives you big time damage is very tempting. But believe me, there is not a single situation in the entire game where you really ever need a ribbon to perform well. In fact, many of the setups that I personally run right now completely got rid of all ribbons just using normal mods that are accessible to every player out there. Most players, especially in the mid game where ribbons all of a sudden become very interesting, right? There are tons of other things, maybe arcanes for example, that I would suggest rather investing your platinum into instead of ribbons because they will benefit your account more in the long run than just one ribbon for one specific gun. All right, the next mistake, and I know a lot of players make this, can really hurt your account in the way that you're missing out on a lot of great items potentially. What I'm talking about is running relic missions alone. Now, my main point right here is the missions in which you crack open the relics to get your prime parts out of them, you never ever want to run them alone. Because when you run them with multiple players, after all of you have cracked open the relic at the end, you don't just get whatever was in your personal relic. If you don't like your own item, you can just go and pick the item that was in another player's relic. And the good thing here is that this is not like in many MMOs where when multiple players pick the same raid reward, it's randomly decided who will finally get it. No, in Warframe, if multiple players pick the same item after a relic mission, all of these players will get the item. In other words, if you run relic missions alone, you're missing out on potentially three exceptionally great items that you could have if you would just go and run it with randoms. Also, if you want to farm a specific relic to get a specific prime part out of it, you can go to the recruit chat to find a pre-made team of people that also want to run just that one relic greatly increasing your chances of getting the item you desire. And now that we're already talking about opening up void relics, the next point that I'm trying to make is keeping useless prime stuff that you got from random relics that you actually don't need. See, a lot of Warframe players out there have this mindset that you should only ever consider selling off prime parts to other players if you have at least one of them already, because you never know when you potentially hypothetically one day might need it. And I personally question this mindset. Here's what I mean. First of all, if you really like to collect stuff, I'm gonna be the last one to force you to sell it off anyway, right? You play the game the way you feel comfortable. But if you don't really care about it, or you haven't put much thought into the question at all, then I would like you to consider maybe going and selling off prime parts that you don't want to build anytime soon to get some platinum by trading it with other players, because that platinum, you know, even very low amounts of platinum in the early game can be put to really good use, maybe by buying even more inventory slots for weapons and warframes, right? Or alternatively, you could buy mods that are kind of a pain to farm, but also mandatory on pretty much every build like Split Chamber for more multi-shot going on rifles. So the point I'm trying to make here is, do not sit on a big pile of prime items from relics that you have no idea when you will ever get to building them and you might not even want to build them in the first place, right? Rather, look at what you got, think about, do I really need it anytime soon? And if you don't and they make a good buck on Warframe.market, then set them in there and make some platinum that you can use to buy more power for your account. Now, the next mistake on our list is a really painful one, and over time, I've seen quite a few, unfortunately, in the comments who were forced to close their account and start the entire game from scratch just because they made that one decision. And that is going into specific quests that lock you from going back into the normal game until you finish them when you don't have the power to actually be able to finish them. Now, don't worry, I'm not gonna spoil you about anything that's gonna happen in this quest, but of course I have to tell you which quests these are and what you need to look out for. So here we go. The first story quest where you're locked in the quest until you finish it, if I recall it right, would be the War Within. Now, the good part about this is you really do not need anything special. If you were comfortably able to get to the point in the star chart where you unlock the quest, then I think you will not have much trouble with actually finishing the quest itself. However, the other quest that locks you is called the New War. And for this one, there were unfortunately a couple more people who had problems with it. Now, in order to be even able to start this quest in the first place, you need to own both a Necromech and a Railjack. The problem here is though that the game lets you start the quest as soon as you have them, but it does not look at how strong these actually are or if they're even upgraded at all. 
And while the sections in those missions where you need the Railjack and you need the Necromech are not necessarily that difficult, you want to make sure to at least have some mods, you know, some more health, some more armor on both your Necromech as well as your Railjack. Especially for the Railjack part, my personal recommendation would be to at least upgrade your guns to the standard versions but the level 3 ones, get two crew members to man your secondary turrets and give them a lot of expertise in gunnery, and then mod as much health and armor onto the Railjack as you possibly can. So no matter where you are in the game right now, just keep this one in the back of your mind once you actually get to those missions. And last, but definitely not least, we have something that is more directed towards the later game players, I would say, and that is, do not miss the chances of getting your weekly Archon Shards. Now, Archon Shards, unlike pretty much any other type of upgrade in the game, can only be obtained in certain quantities per week. That is, one guaranteed Archon Shard from your weekly Archon Hunt, one weekly Archon Shard sold by Chipper for doing the call missions, and then you have five chances per week to run the mission type called Netracells, which was unlocked by the Whispers in the Wall update, which also have Archon Shards in the drop tables among other things. Do not forget to do them if you have time for it, and they're only getting more and more relevant looking into the future of the game. Now, in the beginning of the video, I said you shouldn't splurge all your endo on just one single mod. But if you also want to know how to get thousands of endo in just a few minutes, then you absolutely need to check out my endo guide right here too. Big love to Niels V, Demon Lord Zell, Demon Emperor, Emperor Prime, Bland Waffle, Nas Linux Gaming, Lycan Shepard, Turtle Pier, JPT Copeman, Shadow Soul, and all other generous channel members for your continued support. We see each other hopefully in the next one, and until then, as always, good loot.